looks like Las Vegas. You know, I actually kind of like this stuff. 2021 is almost over, but before we could go into 2022, we have to look back at the year and celebrate. Celebrate with the official Z-Man Show Game of the Year Awards. That's right. Thank you, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Before we get into the list, I have to let you know, I did not play every new game that came out this year. And to be honest with you, a lot of the games I was looking forward to in 2021 ended up being kind of uh, underwhelming to me. But hey, today I found five excellent games that you should play, plus one remake that I want to give a shout out to. And well, that's what we're going to be talking down today, and it should be a very fun video. So grab your drink, relax, and let's enjoy the list. But before we get into the list, it'd be really killer if you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell as well for notifications on future videos. Those two simple clicks really help me out and any creator you follow on YouTube. So thank you very much if you've been subscribing and uh, sharing the videos with your friends and family. So with that said, let's get into the list. But first, with a remake that I really want to give out a shout out to, and it's more fun than A Barrel of Monkeys. It felt like 2021 had a lot of older titles coming back, be it ports, remasters, or remakes. Some of them were pretty solid, others not so much. Thankfully, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania is really solid. Damn solid, I should say. As mentioned in my Wii Christmas video, I love the Super Monkey Ball series, and this is just what I wanted. All the classic levels are back, for better or for worse. The mini games are very enjoyable, especially with friends. And you can now play as Kiryu chan. What's not to love? Playing Banana Mania made me feel like a kid again, and I really hope Sega can keep up this quality with future releases. I don't know why we continue to make art when Super Monkey Ball 2 exists, but hey, you know what, Banana Mania was a great remake, and I hope we get more games like this in the future. With that remake out of the way, I want to get into the list proper with a game that's sure to take your heart. I think this title fell by the wayside as it did release pretty early in the year and it is a Musou game which tends to get a bad rep in the states, which is a shame as Persona 5 Strikers is so much more than a button mashing hack and slasher. Koei Tecmo beautifully blended in the Musou formula with Persona elements in a way that doesn't feel like a gimmick but instead giving new life into the Musou formula. And if you're dressed here for the plot, the Phantom Thieves are as likable as ever and you get more time with them and that's always nice. And if nothing else, you get to explore Japan in a time where, well, it's kind of hard to explore Japan. For me, Persona 5 Strikers is one of the best Musou games, and one you owe yourself to play if you like the Shin Megami Tensei series, or just good brawlers in general. Or good games in general, for that matter. I had a lot of fun playing Persona 5 Strikers and just going to all the different parts of Japan. I'd be like, yeah, I've been there, and I've been there, and I've been very drunk there. Anyway, let's keep this list of rockin' with the game at our number 4 spot. Metroid Dread getting that Metroid bread. This is what the series needed. Metroid Dread plays like an old school brutal 2D action game, but has a lot of modern concessions to make it easier for newer players to get into. What I think Metroid Dread excels at is being a good pick up and play game. Whether you're putting 5 minutes or 5 hours into Metroid Dread, it's so easy to get lost and just start blasting things because it's so fast and so responsive. And the level design here, top notch. I feel like really hardcore gamers got a lot out of it just showing off and trying to speed run the game and if you're just a casual gamer well it's just fun to rock around and blast stuff so if you want to get into the metroid series this is definitely one you need to check out i am so happy for metroid fans i'm so happy that metroid's getting the recognition it deserves and i really hope nintendo keeps making more metroid games in the future and um i'm, I'm holding out hope we'll get that new kid icarus game one of these days Outer Space is fun, but I want to hit the streets of Tokyo and Yokohama with the game at our number 3 spot. Were you a victim of bullying in high school? Well then do I have the game for you. Lost Judgment follows RGG Studios' trend of making excellent brawling life games with the Yakuza spin-off Lost Judgment, starring Takuya Kimura. Like any Yakuza game, this title is extremely dense with everything from detective work to school events to ass kicking to dancing to do. Every year in my best of the year list, a game from RGG Studios appears on it. I think it's a testament to how good they are at making games if I can play multiple games with the same map and never get bored. Sega and RGG got the winning formula here and I'm looking forward to more adventures in the Japanese underworld in the future. Hey Sega, here's a free idea for you. Uh, make a Sakura Wars game like Yakuza, or better yet, make a Cowboy Bebop game like Yakuza, or Berserk like Yakuza, and you will print 
freaking money with that bullshit. As much as I like Shinjuku and Yokohama, my home away from home is Shibuya, and that's the game at our number two spot. Square is a bizarre company. If they aren't huffing glue while writing Kingdom Hearts or publishing garbage like Left Alive, they make absolute gold that they totally forgot to promote. And that's Neo, The World Ends With You. I like the first title, but it didn't have the gameplay to keep me hooked. This title brings in the art, characters, plot, and gameplay to make it one of the best action RPGs I've played in a long time. It was always fun messing around with pen setups, but chugging a strong zero, and erasing the noise that plagued my home away from home, Shibuya. And of course, the music is absolutely dynamite. I found out that the OST is on Spotify, and I listen to it very often. Even after clearing the game, I keep thinking about my adventures with Rindo and the Wicked Twisters, and I want to know where they go next. I'm hoping Square takes another chance at the series, and you know, actually promote it, because this series is something unique, and something I want more of. Square Enix, we have our disagreements, but there's one thing we can agree on. Promote your games. I don't want to see the next World Ends With You title if you make it sell like the previous game, because this game, the series, deserves so much better. And uh, for the next game, Make sure you have Strong Zero as a power-up, because you gotta make it really authentic to the Shibuya experience. And uh, I'm also calling it here, right here, right now. You're going to see The World Ends With You in Kingdom Hearts 4. Just gonna say that right now. Anyway, with me ranting against Square Enix over, let's get to the game at our number one spot. It's the grand finale for this video, and it's a grand finale for one of my favorite video game characters of all time. No More Heroes is a series that people either love or hate. You either get into the meta humor or you don't, and for me, I absolutely love it. No More Heroes 3 was what I wanted for the grand finale of Travis Touchdown Story. Total insanity. I like that the game keeps throwing weird shit at you to keep you on your toes, and the cutscenes either made me laugh really hard or made me start wiping away my tears. And I think the series knows that the gameplay can get really repetitive, so it makes in just enough new gameplay to cleanse the palette without feeling like it's overstaying its welcome. I know some publications blasted 3 for the technical performance on the Switch, but I actually think it adds to the surrealness to the game. To me, No More Heroes 3 is the definition of punk doing whatever the hell it feels like without any worry of what others think of it. And that's No More Heroes 3. It's funny, it's violent, it's heart-wrecking, and it's awesome. And I couldn't have asked for a better conclusion to Travis' story, and I couldn't ask for a better game for 2021. I love the No More Heroes series, it really resonated with me, and uh, I really had a good time playing No More Heroes 3, and I really hope we see more of Travis Touchdown in the future. Even if it's not his own game, just seeing more of him is always a good thing. And uh, with that out of the way, the list is finished, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed my beverage. Just some real talk here, I know 2021 has been kind of a transitional year, I know some people it's gotten better, some people it's gotten worse. For me, it's been kind of in between. For me, this year has been a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, and a lot of me coming to terms with issues that I've been dealing with and have finally come to the surface after so much time. With all that bad stuff, there's been a lot of good for me. I've met a lot of wonderful people, I've done a lot of things, like I got to commentate Super Smash Bros. World Tour, that was really sick. And uh, the YouTube is actually going somewhere, so thank you so much for everyone who's been watching, been supporting me, and uh, you have no idea that it means the world to me. So thank you. Grab your drink, and let's go into 2022 with nothing but good vibes and positivity. And, uh, yeah, cheers. So leave me some comments. What was your favorite game of 2021, or uh, what was your worst game of 2021? That will be a fun discussion, too. And while you're down there, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell as well for notifications on future videos. Hit me up on the social media. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at ZMangs. Hope you had a wonderful holiday season, and you hope you have a fun and safe New Year's, because uh, y'all already know what I'm going to be doing. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video and I'll see you in 2022. Later everybody, take care.